lab were very interesting. The molecular biology of neurons. For example, in our model system, uh, we grow neurons um, dissociated from the, the, the brain of a rat on a dish. And the neuron grow on a dish are very interesting. Uh, for example, the, the, where certain proteins are. For example, we're interested in protein A. And because the, the, where the protein is very, uh, very often implies the function of this, uh, uh, this protein. For example, this protein A is in these places of the neuron. And uh, the conventional uh, immunofluorescent microscopy um, usually takes uh, an antibody labeling strategy where we have a primary antibody that targets the protein A, and then we have a secondary, uh, secondary antibody that targets the primary antibody. Uh, the secondary is fluorescent. It's attached to a fluorophore. So in this case, so the primary antibody it finds a protein A, and the secondary antibody um, uh, uh, finds a primary antibody and then attached to the fluorophore. And then through this fluorophore, we can visualize uh, uh, this protein A. Um, now this is all very well and good, but then the problem is when you have two copies of protein A that are very close to each other, and then you would get labels that are very close to each other. In that case, you have two fluorophores that are very close to each other. They would uh, actually, the fluorophores would actually fluoresce like this when they're next to each other. And that gives us an image under the microscope that looks like one big cloud of fluorescence when in fact that could be uh, one, two, or uh, any number uh, uh, of, uh, of copies of uh, uh, fluorophores in, uh, within this cloud of fluorescence. Now this is uh, the problem that we face with conventional uh, microscopy method is, is called the diffraction limit. And uh, <clears throat> a new technique uh, that allows us to to super resolve these uh, crowded molecules, um, it takes a different approach to, to this. Um, what it does is uh, it uh, takes a video of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of these, uh, uh, these, uh, these fixed neurons, where in one frame, so example in frame one, we see one molecule fluoresce, and the, the other molecule, despite being there, it does not fluoresce. And in frame two, you know, in another frame, for example, frame two, uh, the other molecule fluoresce, and the molecule right next to it, it does not fluoresce. So, what, and, and then in, in these uh, frames, you can uh, very quickly pinpoint, um, very precisely pinpoint the position of each molecule that fluoresce. And we combine these frames in the end, you create an image, reconstruct the image, where you have all the molecules that you've labeled and, uh, and these molecules are super resolved from each other. And, the re and uh, so this, at the moment, we can routinely achieve a, a, a resolution of about 10 nanometers. And the fraction limit that we have uh, discussed here is about 200 nanometers uh, at the best. And the reason why we want to go beyond 200 uh, uh, nanometer resolution is when you look at these neurons, they have these type of structures called synapses. These are the biological structures that, uh, that's responsible for information transfer and storage um, in these neurons. <clears throat> now these biological, th this is a synapse, for example. The synaptic cleft is only about a 20 nanometer. That's way below um, the, the, the diffraction limit. And then the, 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 the size of the, the diameter of a synapse can be only a few hundred nanometers. So that's very close to the diffraction limit as well. So that's the reason why uh, we need a technique that allows us to uh, super resolve uh, two molecules away from each other. Now, the, 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 now coming back to, to, to the, the, the methodology of uh, how do we achieve this kind of uh, 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 blinking so that you know in one frame this molecule fluoresce and another frame another molecule fluoresce. So one way to do this is instead of putting a fluorophore onto an antibody or antibody secondary antibody is still here is instead attached to 
a DNA oligo. Now what this uh, DNA oligo allows is it, it will capture the complementary oligo that is, uh, that is uh, fluorescent, that carries the fluorophore. Now this complementary oligo, when it is bound to the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the oligo that's on the antibody, then the fluorophore is on the protein as well. Then you would see this molecule. But because this DNA oligo is so short, it will also dissociate uh, after a while. You are able, uh, the, the hybridization lasts about a second. And once it dissociates, so it went away again. And this, this protein, this copy of protein here, you can't see it anymore because it doesn't have a fluorescence. So it's this on, kind of on off uh, uh, dynamics that creates this kind of blinking effect that causes the molecule to be to, to fluoresce in one frame, but not anymore in another frame. Um, and, and this technique uh, that, that creates this kind of blinking and, and that eventually allows us to resolve molecules uh, uh, at this high, uh, high resolution is called DNA paint.